And did you and he make the colored lights go spinning around last night? And Karen is wise to Kathy's feelings. Ask questions? Oh, yes, of course. How long have you been in love with my husband? One life to live. Watch today following All My Children on ABC. Thank you, Doreen. If I have one more brandy, I am not going to be able to have an early day tomorrow. So, uh, listen, thank you very much for a, a very pleasant evening. Delicious meal. It really was lovely. Peter, I'm so glad you were free. Yeah. I am, too. I mean, I think we did some important talking this evening. Don't you? Yes, we did. For a change. <laughs> It's worth. I think you're doing really very well. I mean, you're looking at yourself a lot more objectively. And that's very healthy. Oh, I feel it. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Oh, well, yes, I'll do my best. Now that you've never 
never asked before. It's a very positive sign. Peter. I would like to think that, that this is the beginning of something. Now, is, is that being presumptuous of me? No. I think that's simply honest. Because you're really a very handsome man, and it would be so... Well, it would be very easy to become suddenly involved, but I really wouldn't want it to happen that way. No. Then we won't let it, will we? No, Dorian, we won't. But you know, I think that I will give Will Vernon a call tomorrow. Whatever for? Oh, just to let him know that you and I had a very pleasant evening together. I think he'd be pleased to know that. <laughs> I don't think he'll believe you. Don't you uh, go selling yourself short. And don't ever underestimate Will Vernon. Peter, you are such a dear man. It's been my pleasure. I, uh, I know that you're very busy tomorrow, but... Do you think you could call us? I'm very fond of you. And all you can say is I'm big on flattery. Come on, Marco. I'm not really supposed to believe that, am I? Why not? Well, in the first place, you don't hardly even know me. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Everything. I mean, there's a, a real big difference between real feelings and just plain old everyday sweet talk. You're telling me I'm lying? Hey, now, I didn't say that. Oh, no, no, you didn't come right out and say those words, but it amounts to the same thing. All right, okay, you're right. But you know something? You want to know a little secret? It's my experience that those people who accuse other people of lying are usually people who are living some kind of a lie themselves. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? What, I hit a nerve? Come on, Becky, what is it? What is it that you're so anxious to hide from the rest of the world? It's getting late. I gotta go to sleep. Good night, Marco. All I know, there isn't anything anyone can say or do now that alleviate your pain, but as time goes on, things will change. Will they? Yes, they you don't have to look for reasons to go on living. You have to. You're talking about Pat. Yeah, talking about Pat. Talking about your work. Talking about all the people that respect and love you. Joe, my whole world was wrapped up in that boy. And he's gone. And you can't imagine going out without him. That's right. I can understand why you feel that way. Can you? Yes, Paul. I can. You see, I've been there. Yeah, but uh, your son came back. I'm talking about my son. I'm talking about my daughter. Daughter? She was such a little thing. Megan was her name. She died. You mean you and Vicky? Well, no, Vicky, uh, Vicky wasn't the mother, Paul. Uh, you see, that? well, that's another story. I'd rather not go into it right now. But God knows uh, I've been through what you're going through right now. What do you mean I survived? And you will, too. You really will. Uh, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Joe, I really appreciate what you've done for Pat. And I don't know how she would have done it without both of you. Well, we're happy to do anything we can for Pat. Uh, oh, we love her. You love her, too.
too, don't you? You're still married to her. So I can't understand why you... Well, it, it's none of my business. You can't understand why I'm not by your side, is that it? Frankly, that's it. Very simple, Joe. She has Tony. Yeah. Tony hasn't exactly been the rock of Gibraltar lately, has he? Why? I don't know. Maybe you should ask him. Maybe I'll do just that. But in the meantime... Look, Paul... You know, Pat's in pretty bad shape. Vicky and I want her to stay with us, but already she's talking about moving back to her own house. You think she means it? I know she means it. I don't think she's in any emotional state to move anywhere at this point. Look, uh, you love her, I'm sure you'll do what you can to, to help her. Right. Hello? Good evening, Mrs. Lord. Good evening, Marco. And just what do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I don't want anything. I, um, I just called to see how the old insomniac was doing. Oh, I see. You know, you don't have to tell me what you want, because I can figure it out all by myself. Oh. Well, look, it's been a long time, Dorian. Why don't I, um, come over there later? That's right. It has been a long time. And I'll let you in on a little secret, Marco. It's going to get longer and longer. So why don't you just go back to your tawdry little room and eat your heart out? Because this old insomniac is plain not interested. I 
wasn't so much that I was angry. It's just that, well, for once, I did something for myself, something that I wanted to do. In the past, I... I always invited Marco to come over because I was so afraid to face that moment when I'd have to walk into the bedroom and be all by myself. But then when I did, I always felt so cheap about it. Well, what gave you the courage to reject Marco last night? I don't know if you believe this, but I... I think it was Peter Jensen. Peter Jensen? In what way? Well, Peter came over last night for dinner, and... We had this nice, long, serious talk, and all of a sudden I found myself opening up to him, telling him all kinds of things that I, I really very rarely told anyone else. And then when it came time to say goodbye, he kissed me, and, but it was much more than just a friendly little kiss. And it could have led to something, but neither of us wanted it to. Well, it sounds like you have reason to be pleased about last night, Doreen. Well, I want so much not to make any mistakes this time. And this seems to be, this seems to be a healthy idea. I mean, Peter is not married, and as far as I know, he's not involved with, with any other woman. God knows I don't know what a meaningful relationship is, but if there is such a thing, I would like to find out about it with Peter. Well, I'm very happy to hear you talk like this, Dorian. I'm very proud of you. Thanks. Now, if I could only find out where Melinda is, I... I wouldn't have a worry in the world. Change. And your seat. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Can I help you, sir? I... Yes, I'm quite sure that you can. What would you like? What would I like? Oh, I... I have a list right here. It's a ski jacket, goggles, mask. It's on the list. All right, let's see what we can do for you. Um, Excuse me. I've not seen you here before. Are you new? I just started working this morning. Well, the management has very good taste. Thank you. Uh, what size ski jacket do you wear? Large. Uh, do you like ski? Actually, I never tried it. Come on. You have to be, I mean, you can't be serious. Yes, I am. Oh, well, I think something should be done about that. Hey, excuse me, miss. Excuse me. But uh, you sure changed me. I uh, what? You sure changed me. I was supposed to get 55 cents back. You gave me 35. I'm sorry, sir. I was sure I gave you two quarters and a nickel. <laughs> well, you didn't. I have what you gave me right here. Look at it. Well, I was sure. Well, now, what are we going to do about it, huh? Excuse me, but I believe the young lady has already said that she was sorry. Well, I uh, really don't care about sorry. I just want the right change. Look, you know, if you had counted your change when the lady gave it to you, you could have caught the mistake then. Sir, I really do regret the mistake. It's my first day so, here. Come on, look. Do I get my money or do I have to talk to the manager? Oh, there's no need to do that. Excuse me. There's absolutely no need to do that. Uh, let's see. Here's your 20 cents. And I believe that's the door. Sorry for the interruption. Now, where were we? Oh, dear. I'm afraid I've gotten off to a bad start. No. No, on the contrary. You have gotten off to a very good start. With me. Thank you for trying to be so helpful. You're really upset, aren't you? I'm just afraid that nothing's gone right since I started working here. I'm sure that's all in your imagination. Now, why don't we just find all the things on this list, and while we're doing that, we can decide when you're going to have your first skiing lesson. Which I could tell you more, Joe, but there isn't any more at the moment. I understand there were two witnesses. Yeah, that's right. There were two witnesses, and, and both of them are reasonably sure they saw two people in the car, a man driving and a female blonde passenger. And one of them is almost sure the, the license number of the, of, the, of the car, the first two digits, were 97. That strikes me a bit electrical. Yeah, well, it might seem like a lot, but it really is. Now, here, here's, here's the way it works. We feed all the information we have into a computer. We get a readout of all the cars in the state that uh, fit the description we have. Then we 
start trying to locate all those cars, and then we try to determine from the owners where they were at the time of the accident. Sounds like an easy job to me. Well, no, it isn't an easy job. But by the time we narrow it down to the person who did it, assuming we get that far, chances are the car has been repaired, painted, and there are no traces of the accident at all. I suppose you do have your work cut out for you. Yeah, and it's pretty much always that way with a hit one case. Okay, let's assume you, you find out who's driving the car, you find the car, I mean, what then, huh? Unless we can prove intent to kill or negligence or recklessness, it's, uh, well, pretty much impossible. It, it, and the guy gets off with maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, leaving the scene of an accident. That's no, ridiculous. Uh, I mean, yeah. both witnesses said the man was speeding. <laughs> right. He could have been, and he could have also been drunk. But if you can't prove those things, and it's very hard to prove it, you just might as well forget it. Well, it occurs to me we ought to do a series on how lax the laws are around here. That's not a bad idea, Joe. Well, I gotta get back to headquarters. I will, uh, tell you. The moment anything comes in. Thank you. Go ahead. Before you go, I understand that you're thinking of running for a seat in the city council. City council? Hey, that's terrific. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I found out myself this morning. Now, who told you that, Joe? Uh, hold it. You know better than ask me that. Okay. Oh, are you going to or not? I don't know. I, uh, I haven't said yes yet. I haven't said no yet. Spoken like a true politician? Right. Uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah. Bye. So, I'm having all the locks changed before I go back to the cottage. That's really lucky. Uh, nothing was taken. Oh, you're telling me. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't know, Casey. Between the burglary and now this article I have to write for the Lord Press, my life is just a little bit hectic. So whatever you could do to help me out with the workload today, I really would appreciate it. Well, listen, I'll do anything I can. Just the work. Just the work. Hi! Kara. Oh, hi, Kathy. Can I come in? Oh, yes, of course. Larry's not here yet. No, I know. I, uh, I don't really need to talk to him. Oh, well, can I do something for you? Yes, well, uh, I was here last night before uh, he got off work, and I told him I wanted to do some volunteer work, and he said for me to come down and talk to you, so here I am. Oh. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. As a matter of fact, your timing couldn't be better. Oh? Well, I was just telling Casey that... Oh, excuse me, Casey, this is Karen Wallace, Dr. Wallace's wife. This is Casey Stollard. He's one of our attendants. How you do? I was Hi. just telling Casey that my life is just a little bit hectic right now. In fact, you're a lifesaver at the moment. Oh, well, that's terrific. Well, great. Listen, I'll, I'll go and get some of my errands done, and, uh, Casey, you can tell her about the phones and how to check in the patients. I shouldn't be but a few hours. Great. Well, take your time. Okay. We can hold everything together here. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Would you like a cup of coffee, Mrs. Wallach? I'd love one. Coming right up. Oh, I can see today's going to be a lot of laughs. Big pardon? Oh, nothing. Do you take uh, cream or sugar, Mrs. Wallace? No, no, black is fine. <laughs> Listen, is everybody so formal around here? Sorry, what's your name? Casey. Casey? I'm Karen. Okay, Karen it is. Hey, uh... Thank you so much. So, uh, you're Dr. Wallach's wife, huh? That's right. That's who I am. Well, now, remind me to congratulate the good doctor. He has uh, very good taste. If you don't mind my saying so? No, I don't mind your saying so at all. Well, uh, you gonna show me the phones or are we just gonna stand here and stare at each other? Well, it's not my fault you're so pretty. Oh, my, my, my. Casey, you have a way with words, don't you? Wanna show me the phones? Life to Live will continue in a moment. Next on General Hospital, I feel like I'm waiting to be born again. Lamont hopes the ordeal is nearing its end. But for Mark, a new danger threatens. Lamont Corbin could come out of that operating table, neither dead or alive. Nothing more than a vegetable. And Katie turns to Mark for help. Then you've got to help me first. <laughs> Make me strong. General Hospital, next. Watch today, right after One Life to Live. Here's your credit card receipt. Thank you. Did you get everything now? Well, yes and no. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, it 
it's really simple. I came in here with this list. And yes, I got everything on the list that I wanted. But I also met a beautiful and charming young woman. And no, I don't know your name yet. May I ask you what your name is? Glenn. Lynn... Kramer. Well, Lynn Kramer, would you like to go to dinner with me this evening? Oh, thank you. But I'm afraid I have to say no. I see. Well, let me see if I can guess why, okay? Yeah? Well, there's, there's no wedding ring there, and there's no diamond ring, so you're not engaged, and you're not married, so I don't know why you won't go out with me. Well, you see, I'm a musician, and I have to practice tonight. And you play the piano. How did you know? Oh, my dear. Entirely elementary. You see, you have very long, delicate fingers. And I'll also bet that you don't practice every evening. No, but... Well, then we can get together some other evening. Hey, um, excuse me. Listen, I'm, I'm entirely respectable. I mean, boy, am I respectable. I mean, I'm even a doctor. It's at Landview Hospital. A doctor? Mm hmm My name is Peter Jansen, and I work in the children's wing. I'm awfully sorry. I have to go now. Um, someone wants me to get a counter. Vicky, uh, thanks for making time for me. Oh, Paul, for heaven's sake. Joe and I are your friends. I talked to him last night. Yes, I know. He told me. Yeah. He mentioned that Pat was thinking of moving back into the house. That's right. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I hope that we can talk her out of it. Well, we are doing our best because we both feel she should stay with us for a bit longer. So do I. Especially after last night. What happened last night? Well, after I left Joe's office, I went over to Pat's house. And I went into Brian's room. Now, I don't know why I did that. I, I must have felt compelled to do it, or maybe I was just trying to make some sense out of everything. But whatever the reason... I'm afraid I just couldn't handle it. Oh, well, that's understandable. Vicky, I'm worried about Pat, though. Now, if it's too painful for me to go into Brian's room, I, mean, I can imagine what it's going to do to her. Well, we will obviously do our best to keep her with us. But if she wants to go, there's no way we can stop her. Yeah, I realize that. On the other hand, if she does go, wouldn't it be better if you went with her? Well, it might be, but only if Pat wants me to. And I'm not so sure if she would. So, what do I do with it? Goes back in the file. Well, then am I supposed to write anything in it? Nope. Your husband, the good doctor, has already done that. Oh. Well, I'll tell you. I don't know why I'm going to file it. I don't think he's going to make it to his next appointment. <laughs> Old man Cooper, yeah, he's gonna outlive all of us. I don't know. I'm Alvin Cooper, and I'm here to see Dr. Woolley. I don't like him at all. I want to tell you, the first day that he ever came in here, that's the way he walked through the door. Right. I tell you, what is it? Oh. No, no, nothing, Dr. Woolley. Is Mrs. Baker outside in the background? Yes, I, I think she is. Would you ever come in, please? Sure. Thank you. Don't you got something to do, Casey? Ah, oh, yeah. Right.